after um, uh, setting the palette and all those sorts of things, you know, the whole conversation about which colors to use and that sort of thing, it comes to this big question about mixing and pre-mixing and all that sort of thing. So Mary puts it to us this way. She says, uh, Mary, I should say, it's, it looks like Mary. <laughs> I bet in, um, in French, it's got an interesting R in it, Mary or something like that, but uh, you'll have to correct me at some point. Uh, before you begin a painting, her question is, do you premix colors so that they're already allowing you to flow with the process of making effects? Or do you, do you mix new colors as you go from effect to effect? Or do you use pure color at the start? So I don't know if I can, uh, you know, be sure about exactly what she means, particularly at the end there about using pure color at the start. But I'm going to give you an idea here in this uh, little... Um, demonstration, if you want to call it that. I don't know of any other way to do it. I can talk about this. I can talk to you till you're blue in the face, but let me try to show you how we use the palette. Um, and I probably should just say how I use the palette. Uh, all, my, all my times in painting have been, no matter where I worked, everything was about direct painting. I'd never been one of those guys who was uh, hung out with people who premixed palettes. So uh, I honestly don't know what that is. So I'm just telling you what, uh, what we do. Uh, that's one of those things, that's one of those few things I've never actually done. It looks like so much work, I couldn't bring myself to, to do it. But the one reason we talk about not pre-mixing is because uh, we have to set the palette literally on the canvas. We have to find the colors. So if you pre-mix, what does that mean? You know, so you could pre-mix every one of these colors from dark to light that way, like a string. Of course, I wouldn't have any room on my palette for anything, to, do, to do any painting if I did that. But, uh, but secondly, um, uh, it's not necessary. It seems to me like it'd be a tremendous loss of, of, of perfectly good paint. So why would I do it? Um, so uh, let me show you what we do. Um, first of all, by saying there's no pre-mixing involved in what we do. Uh, we just, well, let me do it, uh, express it. We, we, we mix a note to the best of our ability the same as any sort of sight sizer might do, we try to mix the note right here on the canvas. Then we adjust the note by using that note as a point of reference, right? So that note's sitting there, you put it up here, and if it's the wrong value, but it's the right color, then you say, all right, should it be darker or lighter? And next to that puddle down there, you add, you, you make a pile of dark, which you believe when you add it to what's already up there would make uh, the right note and you keep on ad mixing that way Mixing on the canvas so you don't get it all stirred up into mud, right? So you want to actually make as fresh a note as you can if a color say isn't red enough You want it more red right next to the puddle of blue and you want to make a blue or red or blue right next to that puddle, you match the chroma and the value with a red with a nice fresh red that you can see it has the right quality and then set that in as, a, as an impressionist would, so as not to overly stir the thing. If you mix the thing too well, if you remix the color over and over, by the way, and just try to get the new note over and over again, what you're gonna get is a very deep pile of paint, which gets more and more difficult to correct because the thicker it gets because it's so thick. So I think we've talked about that before. So let me just see if I can give you some idea of, the, of a simple process. I have junk sitting up in front of me here. I'd, you probably are not going to see what I'm seeing, as I say, because the light's hitting it and bouncing off in a different way uh, for you, uh, from, for me. But I'm going to give this a try. I'll try to talk about it a little bit as I go. I guess I better hang on to that. I might need to look back at it again. So um, so what, the one thing I do that you might, might want to know about is I, as I mix the white and, and make it very, not viscous, not, not, not uh, oily, but I make it um, mobile, make it very uh, fluid, not fluid, uh, let me use, what's a better word? Uh, uh, anyway, I take all the stiffness out of it. So, and, and, and white gets, it tends to get into virtually everything, so uh, it helps with the other colors. The other colors I use, which are all Rembrandt or Winsor Newton, are pretty much not stiff. The only one that winds up being stiff, uh, being typically being the uh, flake white, and some other whites do too. So, all right, so here's my canvas in front of me here. Uh, let's say, what I, the way I work, I start with the light. So let's say, I'm working with this horse over here, this gold color over here, the green, the red, the orange, whatever this puddle is over here. 
I could get down into my palate and be hitting those notes too. I'm not, I'm not, not sure that I'm inclined to. I don't think I have time to, to, to actually give you a painting here today. But so what I'm going to do is just go ahead and hit what I perceive to be the white note, right? So, by the way, what I've done here is I pre-mixed the white to make it just the liquidy quality I want. And uh, I leave it here and use that as my, and, and work with the lighter area colors over here and typically with the darker ones somewhere else. Uh, it doesn't always wind up here, it sometimes winds up straight below, whatever. But So I'm looking at that thing, and I and by the way, one of the, things, the nice things about putting a palette out straight in front of you, between you and the objects out there, is you can get some idea what part of the world you're in. So when I look at that horse's head, I can see that it lives in the yellowish, maybe to greenish, you're right in this little world right here, right? So let's just put some yellow out there, and you can see uh, that it has to be darker. Now we're saving the lightest light, so whatever we put down here is going to be darker Let's just set it there. You see that note? No, you probably can't see it because it's too light. I'm trying to save the light, so this note's going to have to look darker. So if I just go through red, yellow, and blue, now here I am. There's that color. I'm, going to, I'm still hunting for the first note, by the way. So I, that's why I'm still mixing this first one. I'm going to mix till I have one note that I think is a good starting place, right? So maybe it's that, okay? All right, now there's a value. There's a color value that might work, right? That's just a guess, a speculation on my part. Um, so from this point forward, when I try to correct it, that puddle will be sitting there for me. That's my value. And that's, it seems to be right now, it seems to be a very reasonable chroma. So now let's just take a, a, a different brush and do, let's just do the background. Now you're not probably gonna see the same note as I am when I look over there, but this background is fairly dark. Usually I do take some lights, whites first anyway, but it's not a black, black, inky black for sure. It's not black. It's uh, some combination of red and green, red and blue, somewhere in the zone here. So there's a very dark one. Now, if I don't, one of the things we're looking for is the color quality. So uh, when I say that, I do mean um, if the color doesn't show, if I mix this note and I can't see the color note in it, if it doesn't look like a color, and that one does, then I don't have a decent enough note, right? This one looks like it might just be a tiny bit too, too, um, there we go, it comes a little bit. Looks like it might be a tiny bit too light. Looks like it even could be conceivable. Now, don't overdo this. I mean, just get yourself in the ballpark, right? The rest of the mixing is going to happen up here. Uh, so now I'm going to set this note here. This is to the left of the horse's head. And so you can begin to see whether this, when it hits that, will actually pop me a nice light effect. Now that doesn't look like it's quite dark enough. So I'm still looking again, I'd say, for the first note, right? I want the value right. So I'm simply going to say to myself, more. And both of these, by the way, are dark, so I'm just simply saying to myself, in the same puddle, for this, for the moment, right? Because I'm not into the submixture yet, I'm really still trying to hit that first note. So, I want, so I'm making this darker. Now, I believe that note might do it. On the other hand, I see that that note actually goes darker toward, toward this, in this direction. And uh, still maintains a certain amount of color, maybe even getting redder. So I might, so now what I did is I mixed this. Here's the old, here's the original puddle. And right here, I made a dark neck so I can see that I definitely got darker, right? And so over here, I'm now gonna set this. I should have brought some oil up with me. I'm gonna set this here and let it sort of, as it were, show a kind of a fusion into that note. And I can see that it should have been just a touch bluer. Now I just used this right next to the same puddle. Now this is a dark, so right here I'm mixing a blue. That's not that, I'm not taking away the original color and making this note bluer, okay? Now that's just a speculation. I don't know if you can see these colors, but I'm not gonna much try to bring these together for you. That's not my point, it's just to show you how I work. The purpose of the palette <laughs> is to give you a platform from which to adjust notes. Remember, the painting is not just putting notes up here. Painting is repainting, right? So it's the whole process of adjusting. You put down a note and you adjust it, right? So you need the original note to see what you're adjusting it to. And the more you can see of your history right here in a logical way, the better off you are. So my history in, this, in, the, in the color of that is sitting right here. So when I go to say that might be redder, as I get more notes out there, I might say, oh, that should be a little redder. Right next to that thing, I can match the value and the intensity and put either a warm or a cool red in that puddle and adjust this note, wet into wet. Okay, and all this stuff is wet into wet, by the way. So, you know, by the way, one of my, um, one of my fundamental things that we do uh, in, 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 in uh, getting the colors started, and keep on thinking about what we're doing here, uh, we're, 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 
plotting colors out here, sort of in the right places, with the idea, though, of finding out what range of value we're going to be given, what do we have here that we can work in that'll plausibly express that general impression by value, and what, and what range of chromas are we going to be able to work in. So that's our goal here in plotting colors. We're trying to find out what the range we're going to work in is. So this is an exploratory process, very loose, very forgiving, and very pleasant, actually, <laughs> lots of fun. So I put that white there, by the way, and I see this one over here. Pro this one here, from my eyes right here, looks considerably yellower and more brilliant in chroma, making this one almost look blue, interestingly. So, so I don't know where that is in relation to your view of the horse. It's probably landing about here. So I'm just setting this here for a second. That's lighter than that, but it's also too light again. I don't want to use up the white. I don't want to use this. I want every light I put down to be darker. So I'm going to go a little darker with this, and it looks like it's slightly more on the warm side. And again, standing on your head, looking away, thinking big. It's, I say that to people, but they don't know what I mean. I'm looking, so again, I said for earlier, I'm, so I'm looking for this first note here, right? Now, it's probably going to be just a little lighter than that one. So what color is it, right? Now I've made a note, right? Now it's plain to see, at least for me over here, it's plain to see that that's far too red. So, but the value, I'm thinking, you know, may not be that far off, but maybe slightly lighter. So I'm going to do two. I don't usually try to do two mo moves at once. But I'm going to take a yellow, just straight up yellow, but I put, see it next to this. And I believe that this plus that, which is already sitting here, may begin to approximate that note, right? It may get us just a little bit closer there. You see that? I might even do it again, right? Now, uh, I do use oil typically. This is a little stiff. So sometimes these things, make sure that all the oils you use flow similarly, okay? That's a big deal, just saying, okay? So do you follow that now I have a puddle here that represents this thing. I have a puddle here that represents this one. And uh, I have a puddle here that represents the wall back there. All right, and so every other note is just like this, okay? Now that, we don't know better than to say that's a plausible note. If we actually think it's more red, yellow, or blue, or, by the way, it, it might actually be greener. Let's just do this because that's the way the game works, okay? So I'm gonna set down right here a, uh, the same note. I'm just gonna take the straight yellow, and I'm gonna try to get myself a greener version of it. I'm having difficulty because I got glare from my light here. I'm having difficulty seeing this. But say this green here, see this green? I'm trying to mix this green in the neighborhood so it has something like the same intensity. So I can actually say, now if I add that to this, right, see I've matched, basically matched the intensity, but it's greener. Do you see how I can pursue this? Right, and this is just looking for, this is called setting the palette, okay? But using, the, using your spot here, right? So I put down this one at first, it was that, it was too dark. I mixed a thing next to it that I thought when I added it to this would get it the right value. But so you see how these things just simply are, are, are points of reference. So uh, it's a place to plant your foot and say, well, if this, then lighter would look like that, and you can see them side by side. All right, so let's just go ahead and go to, I like to do, I really do like to do the, um, the lights first, just in general, I like to do the lights first, but you need to know what your darkest dark is. Uh, from where I'm sitting over here, it actually is the, um, it's that board, it's that uh, frame over there, but I don't think you guys can see it, so. I, I think I have, probably do have my darkest dark here. It's possible that it's that actual, that darker red in here. But as I said again, from where I'm sitting. Now, uh, I can see this note. I can see this note over here. So to the right, I'm trying to get myself over there. I think just somewhere down here and more or less straight across from that is this, and I'm just putting paint down now, but is this note, right? I'm sorry, is this note. So now I'm just simply go, I'm looking at this pile of stuff here, and I'm saying, all right, well, that's the closest thing to it right there. And I have a puddle right, right down here, by the way. And I'm going to use this one for a reference this time because I know what that was. I know what this one is, rather, that what this is together. So I believe that this note over here, now I'm looking again, looking away a little bit. It looks like it should be dark. It should be, this is, the, remember, this is the initial note, which is just a crude attempt to match that, right? It doesn't mean that's the way we live. It's just a place to get started, okay? So we don't live in sight size, we live in relationships. That's why I said, once you put this down, you can see that that should be, maybe have a little more of a blue, of a blue purple in it, but you can see how, I'm just showing you how I adjust the notes. So, and so I see a little more green in this puddle here. Uh, in other words, I actually see that it's slightly more neutral than this, than this orangey thing here. So right next to here's the orangey thing, and right here is a more neutral note. That conceivably might be the one, right? It might be. Feels to me like it still has to go a little more green and a little more yellow. Again, remember, I'm just using this as the starting point. This is the first note, okay? 
Now that, that stuff up there is just there because I wanted to have this stuff sitting here so I could look at it. So you can see that what I'm gonna do now is match a note, right? And by the way, these blobs you set down, make them loosey-goosey at the edges. Don't cut out shapes. Don't, don't have it look like cut out because it'll look like drawing. You'll start thinking of drawing. You have, have drawing thoughts in your head. But do you see how now your job is to relate these two, right? And so this one looks like it might be nearly dark enough. And part of what you're doing eventually is you put this in a place where you can see what it would do when it hits that one. But it might be dark enough. That would be the spot, by the way, right there. This might be dark enough. But it looks like it should be... Um, maybe moving toward green as it goes down, which I can say I might want to actually say about it. So right here, in that nice little puddle here, I certainly hope you guys can see this. So here we are, I'm making a greener note that's roughly the same value as that. I'm trying to get it a little bit lighter. I'm trying to match the value and the intensity to the degree that I can, but this is actually less intense, so I don't mind. So right down here, I'm setting this in and letting it crawl up to that one so I can see the movement of this thing, trying to suggest that. This is all just color search, and you'll find that you don't always have to be simplistic. If it doesn't perform as a simplistic note, but it goes from oranger to greener or from richer to less rich, you can do that, right? You can put those notes down there. So I just do this all over the entire canvas over and over again, and we're just hunting for the major notes. Um, one, that, one that we don't have yet is, um, is the dark red, the dark family there. I, I, I'm not going to paint this picture for you because I don't have time, but I'm going to set... Now, by the way, I have the darkest dark here, and I don't think this is any different. I don't think that red is any different from this one, but in value, it might be actually darker. Now, by the way, you got to know what you're talking about. The very top of it looks like it's exactly the same value, from my angle at least, because you can't see a silhouette in contrast there, right? Silhouette and contrast are functions of each other, right? If, it's, if you actually have a silhouette, you have contrast. If you don't have a silhouette, if you don't have contrast, you won't have a silhouette, and back and forth. So, you know, one of the things you can do is you can look at this red over there, you can look at it and see whether it's lighter or darker or whatever. Uh, just look at it, you know, it doesn't mean you're buying into using it there, but so I'm just gonna set this here now. We would have done a bunch of other work, but I'm still isolating these things. Okay, there's that red, right? I look at that red while I'm looking at this one and it looks like it should be decidedly richer. Now I had dirt in my brush, right? And I don't much run away from the dirt in the brush because every area has red, yellow, and blue in it, right? but I do have to make it richer, so richer. There we go, richer. So now here's my puddle. This is still my original note, right? I'm not, I am, see when it's, 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 um, it's the spot where I should actually say right here. I'm sorry I said that, showed it you that way, but here's the red that I'm thinking, if I add it to that, it will give me the right note here. Now all I'm trying to do is get the relative richness and the relative redness to this. Now one thing that you want to do when you're trying to get these notes, now I want to make that darker, but I want to keep the richness. So I'm going to use black and not blue because I don't want it to turn blue unless it actually does turn blue. In this case here, it looks like I have to, to retain the redness, I'm going to have to use black. So I'm going to use this black, this red, and I'm still trying to, I'm trying to get darker, but I'm trying to maintain the, um, the richness if I possibly can. That's rather not doing it yet, right? It probably would, if I had a clean brush, it would have been probably straight alizarin that would have done the job. So, and again, here next to this puddle, so I'm heading toward a, blue, a cooler, but richer note. Now, if I add it to this, it should, that adjustment should actually bring us pretty close to the note. And you don't have to be afraid. You can actually use the, um, again, next to that one, you can actually use your idea of, well, and, and right here, it's actually that. So that's the life-giving note in that, in that thing, right? And you can say, by the way, if you think that's true, and we have this reference pile here, look at this note way down here below, below the... Uh, I guess it comes right down here, this rich red. There's a rich red down here that I'm just saying, let's assume it's that. Now that, this is a class where you're saying to yourself, is that actually as rich as this one? I don't know where these are all landing, by the way. This, this is the, um, this probably should be higher. It's the uh, red under the horse's mouth. <clears throat> but it's gotta be decidedly richer and decidedly lighter than that one, right? So I'm just gonna set straight up. This is my pile here. I'm moving right to the left of it. And I'm using straight up um, adjusting it with straight up, uh, what do you call it, um, uh, scarlet. My palette, by the way, is a, tries to be a, a cool red and a warm red, you know, and I call this the, uh, this the warm yellow and this the cool yellow. This is this little range and this is the warm green, that's the cool green. I sort of play that way in my own imagination, but I really only use five colors and most colors I can hit quite easily with these five. The reds are the more uh, uh, difficult ones. 
So now, by the way, this here, I know what this is, right? I took it out of here. I can use it straight. And my inclination is not to stir it or anything. I, the only reason I do with anything with it down here is to look at it. But I see that this maybe should be more, more rich, more blue, more whatever. And again, this thing is going to match that in value eventually. Somewhere down here, it'll match that lighter part in value if I'm seeing things right. But you see what I'm doing. So I'm just showing you how to mix the palette. I'm not showing you how to do our kind of painting, but this is called setting the palette in our kind of painting, just so you know. Uh, uh, and I just go round and round like this. I'll stop in a second. Let's see how long I've taken already. Yes, 21 minutes. So let's do one more note for you. Let's just do, um, let's do the dark, the light over, the, the lighter dark, just to the right of that um, horse's, um, and I'm using the whites up here. That's all I'm doing for you but just to the right of the horse over here. So I have this in my brush, and it's probably gonna to be too light because it's, this is decidedly closer in value to, to this than it is to that. So I can just look down here, where's my pile? Oh, this is my pile. So that looks like it's gonna be decidedly too light. So I'm gonna try just to start with the darker dark. This is so much closer to the dark than it is to the light that it's probably a better place to start. Now again, we don't look into the color. Even to see it the first time, look away from it just a little bit and you'll see it more accurately. So I'm just using that. I'm, I'm trying to, it's definitely bluer. And that, but you see now here I'm getting inky and I can see the inkiness. So I'm just gonna lighten it up a little bit uh, or bring it back to life. And you can go all the way through the blues, the greens, whatever. That's pretty fresh looking, right? Maybe I should just use that up because it's a pretty good value. So somewhere over here, there's gonna be a note sitting. And I'm anticipating that when it hits this, there's not gonna be huge contrast. Like when this hits that, there's a significant contrast. But I'm looking at it as the blue, and I stand on my head and look at it, and I say, oh yeah, should be more chromatic, possibly a little lighter. So I'm definitely going to go, and by the way, these, all these darks here, they're, aren't their most chromatic when they're lighter. And that's a factor in your thinking. So I'm going to make this feel a little more chromatic. That's feeling pretty nice, right? But these notes are, remember, they're all subject to adjustment when you see something else, right? So this is what I think it is when I'm looking at the whole, but then I look again really closely at this, and I say I might adjust that one, say, toward, let's just say, toward blue. So if I'm going to adjust it toward blue, here's my basic note, and here's the blue version of it, side by side or nearby, nearby somewhere. <laughs> so there we are. That's a pretty close value to that. And so I can say, oh, yeah, and it does feel like it's actually sort of moving from a bluer note here to a less blue one as I get out there. Now, even this one here, I see should be more. And by the way, that I think might want to have been more light. Uh, so let me try just doing it a little bit lighter, get a little bit more. I want the chroma, if, if the chroma feels good out there, I want it to feel good here. And again, anticipating that it'll look like a light when it bounces off of that. But I still think that this one here, that note wants to be redder. And with this, I'm going to stop, but I hope this is coming across to you. This, this is why you don't need to mix, pre-mix. Because everything you're doing is, is if you want to call it pre-matching, <laughs> it's not pre-matching. You set up a note and you look at it. So there, I'm just putting purple into this, right? You see that? So every area is red, yellow, and blue. There are movements through colors. And so, and you're, as I said, you're always anticipating what will happen when this one comes up and meets that one. And you're not doing any of that meeting stuff until you're ready to set, set up tops and bottoms, lefts and rights, and all that sort of thing. But this is the way we use the canvas, the palette, to explore. So every note I put down... I keep it as clean as I can and go near it to mix to match, right? So this red is trying to match that one and this one in value and chroma. So here I have the red, yellow, and blue of that inherent blue, that thing that's whatever that is sitting inside there. Um, I do use, and I won't do any more now though, but I do use a if, there's a, if I see a lighter to darker movement in a, in a value unit, I'll go ahead and paint it. I think of that rather as form or something like that. It'd be the same thing with this thing here. I probably won't leave it that way very long. I'll move it, I'll move it from a light to a dark. So I can see these colors uh, integrating side by side and all that sort of thing. Anyway, but that's more information than you want to know. Do you see how I use the palette? I hope that's enough. Uh, but, that's, but that's very systematic and scientific use of the palette. You set up your first note, and then you use it for, to adjust. You say, if it's, you try that, but if it has to be lighter. By the way, when I first do it, when I want it to be lighter, if it's a flat note, I actually go ahead and make it lighter right here and block that into it. But for every other, every other adjustment, once I have the value right, and the reason, by the way, why I do it in value, if it's a flat area, is because I can't have broken values because it'll look textured. It'll look busy. And the flat area, by definition, isn't busy. So that's why you actually have to move the value and flat, sort of flatten this note out so it doesn't look like broken values. Broken values, broken values means darker, darks on lights like my fingers here, making, making these, you know, um, whatever you want to call them, 
cross-hatching or something like that. So, all right. Um, I hope you could see enough of that. And go send me questions and let's, let me, or suggest a way that I can show you this better. I, I'll make an effort to do that in the future. Um, the only thing I could have done more of is I could have brought some of these things side by side and show you how then I adjust further, but that's just still the same adjusting. We just adjust. We just are now adjusting in different areas for different reasons. All right. Let's hope that's helpful, uh, Mary. But um, uh, in the meantime, um, uh, see you next week, and I uh, hope you enjoyed that.